Hi everyone, Ian here. And in today's video, I wanna show you our new virtual production studio setup and take you through a step-by-step -step process of how we've come to achieve this setup with the aim of creating a realistic scene with varied focal planes through a range of digital and physical assets. Now, this has been a new medium for me to explore and it's proved both challenging and really exciting to learn. And it's been aided by my colleague, Daniel Haynes, who's the lead technical specialist within the virtual production hub. So a big thank you to him for putting up with my constant barragement of requests and refinements. So if you've not already seen the final test shot, I'll play that first. And then after we'll go behind the scenes and I'll show you how it was created. So hope you enjoy. Hi everyone, so we're now in an empty virtual production space and we currently just have some main lights on so you can see me, but you'll see the virtual production wall is currently turned off. So what I'm gonna have Dan do is turn these lights off and then he's gonna turn on each element on the virtual production wall one step at a time so you can see how it starts to build the entire scene. So Dan, are you okay to turn the lights off for me and start turning on those elements? Absolutely, let's plunge you into darkness there. Bye bye, Ian. So the first thing we're gonna do in this environment is we're gonna bring in a skylight. So let's bring in some sky, nice and bright, um, daytime, midday, some clouds in the background, so on and so forth. The next thing we're gonna bring in are some roads. Obviously we knew that we were building a Japanese kind of street environment, so you need some roads. So we've kind of got a basic layout of roads, some curbs in the background there. You can see where they trail off into the distance. Next up, obviously, we need pavements. That kind of builds out the next framework of the space. So obviously this is now where a lot of our props are gonna get built on top of. The next step is the major buildings, the feature buildings that are gonna be in the scene, things that will be in the background and then even further in the distance, layering things up. So with a button press, I can bring those online. There's some buildings for us. You may notice that there's some gaps between buildings uh, just to the uh, right of Ian's shoulder, you can see there's a gap between some buildings. So the next step I did was I brought in some extra walls just to kind of block off some of those extra areas that you don't really want the audience to see. In the background, Ian said that he wanted there to be lots of quite neon signs, so I brought in a load of extra neon signs. You should be able to see a couple of those pop up on the screen in the background now. We then added in some street lights. And there are our street lights. Each one of those street lights is an instance blueprint. It has a set color temperature of around 3,500 Kelvin. And it is also going all the way down the street, both sides, plus down that side street that you can see just behind Ian. Next up, we've got some foliage, some rockery, some greenery. I can bring those in just like that. We've got a tree, some benches, a, a little bin um, behind Ian. There's one just behind him. And there's one a little further down the street as well on the other side of the crossing. Ian mentioned that he wanted a load of handrails to be in the environment, just like you would expect on a busy road, so that it was the next kind of area that I decided to focus on, adding in some handrails. You'll notice, like I mentioned, the depth of field estimation allows us to have the closer assets to the screen to be in a sharper focus, while the f assets that are further away from the screen, uh, further away from the virtual camera, are less in focus. Next up, I kind of did a, a small pass of miscellaneous props. You can see things like a van, some crates appear in the background, small things that just sell the realism, give you a little bit more of a lived in feel. And last but not least, we have decals. So things that will kind of be projected onto different assets. So things like road markings, graffiti. If I switch those on, you'll see them appear on the floor. Um, you'll also see some graffiti behind Ian as well. Um, with more time, I would bring in animated assets. So things like cars going down the road, things like that. But what I can do right now 
is as I, as we know this is a nighttime environment so I can change the environment to nighttime and all of a sudden everything gets pulled together we bring on in those lights that we turned off at the start and we have our ramen stand environment okay so now we can see that virtual production backdrop is completely built but you'll notice when I'm standing in front of it with no additional foreground assets, it still looks very flat and it still looks very fake in many aspects. It still looks essentially like what a green screen would. We don't have to worry about that green cast coming from it, but it still does look like two separate areas. You'll also notice on the floor that we do have quite a lot of floor showing from the virtual production studio. And we've decided to film in a 2.4 to one aspect ratio to try, to try and remove some of that flooring but we've also added a couple of flooring pieces to the side. And the reason we've added them just to the side is because the ramen stand is gonna sit in the front, so it's gonna mask the rest of the floor. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in this ramen stand. So I've just got it to the side here. I'm just gonna wheel it in and place it into its starting points. I'm just gonna bring it to there a little bit. Okay, and that's round about central. So we can already see that that's starting to really build out the frame a little bit. And we really wanted a large physical foreground asset because it's gonna make the whole space feel fuller and it's gonna add that depth. And we didn't wanna just use a front fascia, so just a basic kind of uh, fascia wooden frame we wanted to build out the entire stand again because it's creating that depth further down now in addition to that we obviously wanted to add some props as well to make it feel more lived in and realistic and we wanted to add some additional lights again because we want to build out those elements so we have a traditional Japanese lantern on one side and a neon sign on the other side and then we have these curtains along the top and the curtains along the top are gonna help mask a light, which is at the top of the ramen stand, which is gonna help illuminate this general area. Now we have a lot of different plugs on the floor. So what I'm gonna do is just turn each one on one at a time so we can see that lighting starting to take place. So first we're gonna turn on the lantern to the side here. Then we've got this neon sign And we'll see here that it is quite bright. So we do have the ability to adjust the intensity of the light as well. It's gonna help with our dynamic range when color grading. And then we've also got our tube light just underneath the curtains. Again, when I turn this on, we'll see that it's gonna add that additional light. Now the camera's Kelvin value is set to around 4,000. And these lights, or the Godox light under here and this light here, are set to anywhere between 3600 and 3200 Kelvin. That means that because this Kelvin range is lower than the camera, we're gonna get a nice warm hue. And that's gonna be important because I want this warm hue to contrast the colors coming through on the virtual production wall. Now the virtual production wall is set to round about 6000 Kelvin, so it's gonna appear as cooler because the camera is set to 4,000 Kelvin, but the street lights on the virtual production wall are set to around 32 to 3,600. So again, they're gonna appear as warmer. Similarly, the lights over here are also set to round about 3,600 Kelvin. So again, a little bit warmer than the camera, just to accentuate that warmth. And that's also gonna accentuate this nice wooden grain effect that we've got on here. Uh, it's been uh, burnt, the wood has, so it's really got that rich, warm texture coming through. Now, as well as this, we also want to build out the side portions of the frame as well. And you'll be able to see now we have the ramen stand in place that these flooring pieces are masking the floor and the floor space that was visible behind the ramen stand has now disappeared. So just with this small amount of flooring, we're really able to try and mask that lower section of the virtual production stage. So now we wanna add some additional elements. So we've got just a couple of seats. 
that we can just put into place. And then we also want to build out the sides of the seam with some shrubbery, so some greenery. Again, this is going to create a nice contrast. So there's not too many elements which are being placed into this scene, but it's just helping build it out a little bit more. And again, it's helping to create that additional depth and separation because we can place these on different focal planes. They're not all sitting on one focal plane. Some are a little bit further behind. Some are very close to the wall. We've also just got a little stand here just with a little menu on. Again, further away from the ramen stand, but closer to the wall, creating that extra depth. Now, something I would like to do in this space moving forward is add additional elements, specifically a bicycle to the other side, which could sit close to the railings and potentially some cabling, which could come off the ramen stand, like the cables you see in Asian cities and potentially attach those via C stands just outside of frame. And if we couldn't do that physically, I think it would be quite interesting to look at generative AI and things like Photoshop in these areas of the frame where actually there's no physical interaction occurring. So we could potentially add those in with AI after the fact. That's something that I wanna look at going forward. Now, all of this has come to around 1200 pounds to design and build. So most of that went into the ramen stand with building the actual frame itself, and then those couple of additional props and elements. But even for a very small build like this, just for one scene, that has come to around 12 to 1500 pounds. So that's something to consider when you are doing virtual production. Even though you don't have to go out onto location, it could still cost you a sizable amount of money when building stuff for the studio space. So hopefully this has given you a good breakdown and it's shown you what we can do in the virtual production space. If you have any questions, let us know. Hopefully you found that interesting. Keep being creative and I'll see you soon. Hi everyone, Future Ian and Dan here. Now, while we were recording our virtual production in action video, we realized that there were some glitches occurring on the virtual production wall. And that was primarily down to some lighting and frame rate glitches. So we thought we'd take this opportunity to talk you through what was going wrong and how we've been able to mitigate that and fix it. So Dan, why don't you take us through what you had to do on either the virtual production wall or on the Unreal Engine to fix those issues? Yes, yeah, so one of the biggest issues that we were having was a low frame rate. So the, the virtual production background that we had on when it was on the volume was running at about 15 frames a second, which obviously is not high enough for it to really look good on camera. Um, obviously, when we had the static camera as we have for the majority of this video, you probably won't have noticed that. Um, but if the second you know we start having moving shots, you would notice the low frame rate pretty much immediately. Uh, to rectify that, I kind of had a look at some of the statistics that you can look at inside of Unreal Engine, um, namely the GPU graph to kind of see what was taking up the majority of the graphical processing time and found that it was mainly shadows and lighting that was eating a lot of that rendering power. Um, all of the lights in the environment were set to uh, stationary and a movable lighting, uh, mainly so that we could move things dynamically in the scene. Um, eventually, like I think I've mentioned, I want to get cars moving in the background. But for such an environment like this right now, because there's so many lights, with it being a nighttime scene, that was also causing a lot of rendering issues, a lot of processing power that we didn't really have the overhead to, to supply it with. To fix that, I went into all of the lighting that we have in the scene and changed its mode to static, which allowed it to be pre-computed. That also goes along with us disabling Lumen. Now I've mentioned that Lumen is really good, it's great for global illumination, but at the same time, that does come with a processing cost. So by disabling Lumen, setting all of the lights to static and then pre-computing the lighting, there is a small difference in how the lighting is displayed, you know, and how everything is shown on screen. Not too much that it would cause massive issues, but it gains a massive performance boost. 
So we've gone from 15 frames a second up to 30, 40 frames a second. In addition to that, I noticed that certain buildings that we were using in the background were causing frame rate drops because of how they were optimized for the screen. So I kind of went in there, tweaked them a little bit, adjusted some of the lighting values and the emissive values that came along with them. You may notice that along the railing down the back, there's not a lot of flickering as there was in the other shots. And we have also added in a couple of extra bits and pieces to further sell the, the environment. So there's the bike just behind me here. There are some wires that are over there and above Ian as well. Um, we've also moved the camera around just a little bit and adjusted some of the placements of some objects in the foreground as well. Um, but overall, the main thing was we adjusted the lighting and kind of just tweaked the, uh, the meshes a little bit just to really get that little bit of extra performance that we needed to hit the performance target, which for us is 25 frames a second. For other stages, it might be slightly different. It might be 50, but for us here, it's 25. Yeah, and I think I'm really happy with the performance overall. And also I think adding those additional elements has actually added some nice focal plane differences as well. And that was something that we talked about in the video, trying to add some additional elements. So again, that bike is adding a bit of pop of color, but it's also adding some additional focal plane distance. And then the cables as well overhead are also doing the same thing. And it would be nice to try and do those with physical cables and see the difference. It would also be nice to try and do that with a physical bicycle. But the nice thing about having these digital assets is that we can add those in without having to go out and physically buy a bicycle, which might be very costly. And again, because we're not interacting directly with it, it's just an element in the background, we're able to do it in that way. So overall, I'm, I'm really happy with this setup. I think we've done great. So again, thanks for watching. I uh, hope to see you soon.